So if you have any experience with redstone whatsoever, you've maybe built with it for a while or you just know the ins and outs, you may eventually have run into a situation where you need to store data. Now, in traditional survival vanilla Minecraft, you can do this easily using an RS NOR latch for binary data or a hexadecimal memory cell for analog signals. But if you need to store a massive amount of data in a small space, your best option in vanilla survival Minecraft is, well, RAM cells. Now SwiftX16 has some designs for incredibly compact RAM. He's got uh, single read RAM, which is incredibly compact, and I use it all the time, uh, as well as dual read RAM, which isn't as compact, but is certainly useful in, in certain applications. The problem arises when you try to use RAM in applications that require maybe something a little bit faster than redstone and pistons. Say, for example, you're a map maker and you need to store a lot of data in a short amount of time and access it extremely quickly because maybe your map is uh, time sensitive or fast paced. One solution is to just store all of your data in individual scoreboard values and then use command blocks to access each value like Lawrence Wayne did in his Command Door 32 command block computer. The problem with this is, in order to access all your data, you need a command block to store every single data, as well as a command block to write every single data and read every single data. Whoopi Concepts addresses this problem by using entities to store data in his brainfuck interpreter. Now, his solution is pretty clever because he actually stores the data in entities and then uses command blocks to shift the entities back and forth accessing the data from the entity that is directly above the access data command. This works incredibly well because you can store massive amounts of data, practically an infinite amount, and access all of it using a handful of commands. The problem with this though is addressing. See, he uses a method by shifting entities back and forth sequentially, so if you wanted to access the next piece of data in sequence, that's no problem. It's perfect for that. But if you need something that's a little bit more like actual RAM, random access memory, you need to be able to access the memory, well, randomly. So if you want to access the next or previous piece of data, that's easy to do with Whoopi Concepts memory solution. But say you want to access a piece of data that's 10 blocks away, or 100 blocks, or 1000 blocks, you're going to have a little bit of trouble. That's where my solution comes in. See, what I've done here is I've created a very similar system for memory, but it allows you to access the memory randomly using an address system. Similar to Wolby Concepts, uh, this method of storing data requires only a handful of commands uh, and stores all of its data in the form of entities so it can be infinitely expandable. The difference here, though, is in order to address each memory cell, uh, rather than incrementing or decrementing your pointer, or in Wooby's case, moving the items back and forth, you actually have an address that you can uh, load numbers into, any number, so long as it isn't greater than the size value up there, and with that number you can access the data in the cell. And just to prove to you that this isn't some sham or anything, um, you can do it out of order. As you'll notice, before we had access memory location 4, we just went straight to 1 and read the value. And if we go straight to 3, we can read that as well. And uh, this doesn't really do anything. I mentioned that you only need a handful of commands. These aren't even necessary. These just set the address value for me so I don't have to type it out manually. The features to the system is all fairly simple. Uh, you've got read and write um, inputs which allow you to read the data that's stored in each cell and write the data to a specific cell. Now to read uh, data you simply pull the lever and whatever cell you select will spit out its data onto the output scoreboard over here. Uh, now to write it you of course need to use the address to select the cell you want to write to and then put the data you want to write into it on the input scoreboard and then hit the write lever and it will write the data onto the cell. We also have two other inputs here. We have create and destroy. Now what these two do is they allow you to expand or reduce the size of your uh, RAM. So by hitting create you actually create another RAM cell and you can see that the size has just gone up by one uh, which means you can create as many 
uh, RAM cells as you like, so long as uh, you know it doesn't completely destroy your computer, I wouldn't recommend going any more than your actual computer can handle. Likewise, if you feel you have an excess of memory, you can easily destroy the cell at the very top, the rest will remain in the stack, and the size will be reduced by one. So the way this works is quite simple. As I previously stated, we store the data that we want to store using scoreboards uh, in the form of entities, in this case, armor stands. And because each armor stand is tracking a scoreboard, uh, we can change the value of each armor stand. In this case, we're going to be changing uh, the, their dummy data value to 1. Now let's say we wanted to set the uh, dummy data value of each individual armor stand uh, without affecting the others. Well to do that what we'd have to do is we'd have to add another variable. Location. Now each uh, armor stand has a different location from the next as you can see over there. This one is location 0, location 1, and location 2. Using this we can use uh, selectors to select the one with a specific location and change the scoreboard value of that one. So as you can see we just selected and changed the value of dummy data for any one with a dummy location of zero. Likewise with one and two. Now this works because it allows us to access each armor stand individually. However, uh, because we're using specific selectors, we have to have a command block for each armor stand. This is detrimental because the whole purpose of this is to try and access as much memory as possible using as few command blocks as possible. So to overcome this, we need a third uh, scoreboard. Temp. Each and every one of these armor stands has three registers on them or three scoreboards, I should say. They have their data, they have their location, and they have a temporary re uh, scoreboard. Now the temporary scoreboard is used for one thing. It is a temporary location for dummy location. Every time you press this, the same command is executed across the board. It moves the value that's in their location scoreboard to their temp scoreboard. Now, this really doesn't do much because now we just have two instances of the same value, except now we can subtract from temporary the address that we want to access. In this case, we're going to be addressing uh, number one, which is this guy right here. So if we go ahead and subtract that, you'll notice now, hey, look at this. We've got each and every one of them has um, a value that is either zero or not zero in their temporary scoreboard. So this guy, because he was location 0, got negative 1, and because this guy was location 1, he got 0, and this guy was 2, so he got 1. Now what ends up happening is the guy with, or the armor stand with uh, location 1 ends up with a 0 in their temp register. It is with this that we can then access that particular um, armor stand and set only his value and no one else. And to prove to you I'm not making this up, I went ahead and changed the uh, address that we're addressing to 2. So now we're going to be writing to this guy if we go ahead and run through that sequence of steps again. You'll notice now that we've just added 1 to this guy. And that's it. That's the secret to, uh, to accessing an infinite amount of data using a handful of commands. Simply keep track of three variables, the data itself, the location, and the temp for each armor stand. Then to access the data in each armor stand, simply move the location to the temp, subtract the address you're trying to access from the temp, and then read or write to the entity whose temp equals zero. And as you can see, that's exactly what we do when we want to read or write to one of the uh, memory cells. We simply make the temp equal to the location, uh, subtract the address that we're trying to access from the temp, and then we'll either read the output or write to the data if the temp is equal to zero. Um, work uh, adding cells and removing cells works the same way especially in removing cells you have to uh, check each location and then remove the one whose temp is equal to zero so I hope you enjoyed this brief little tutorial uh, if you're interested the commands for each command block will be in the description along with uh, the order that they go in and what uh, category they're under in, of course. Uh, and if anybody is interested, I will most likely be posting a schematic of this particular uh, module right here if anybody maybe wants to set one up incredibly quickly in their own world. Uh, but other than that, I hope you enjoyed, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.